Hey everybody, welcome back. Hi. So, you no doubt read the title of today's video, uh, that the heat is working in the tractor. But we have some explaining to do. Yes, a little bit. <laughs> so, uh, when we lost the heat, we, we went through uh, what we felt was a systematic, step-by-step -step approach to diagnosing what the problem was. Um, and we had a lot of help from viewers. A lot of people were giving us great comments, yeah. trying to help us sort this thing out. Um, we removed and tested the thermostats. They were fine. Uh, we drained the coolant from everywhere, the rad engine, cab heat system, coolant heater. Uh, we looked for, uh, we blew coolant through every line. All of them. Like under pressure, we were looking for chunks of crud coming out or blockages. Uh, we found nothing there. Um, we put a new rad cap on. We bled the air from the system. Uh, we followed the manual exactly. So we did everything we could do there. Uh, the thing was, we were basically coming down to the only thing left was the water pump. No. We didn't want to go <laughs> messing with the water pump. And I just, I felt confident, very confident that the water pump, <clears throat> excuse me, was fine. Um, and so just kind of out of desperation, we got a big dump of snow. Uh, we, we had the snow to take care of. The tractor was working. So, uh, we brought it out and, uh, you know, just brought it up to temperature another time. And just like that, boom, the cab heat was working fine. Ta-da! So, yes, it's fixed. Are we thrilled that we don't have an answer for you as to exactly what the problem was? No, we're not. No. And I'm also thinking, well, heck, if this were to happen again next year, we wouldn't, we wouldn't have no, the, the... Not a clue. Not we, a clue well, we, what to start we, with. Yeah, we wouldn't have the trek. Now, anyhow, uh, I suppose it is what it is. I do apologize to you guys because this is a pretty, pretty shitty way to end, Absolutely. you know, uh, uh, like whatever 10 video long drama or whatever this thing was. So apologies for that. We're not happy about it either. I don't think anyone's happy about it. No, I'm not happy. <laughs> so <laughs> anyhow, um, yeah, uh, that's going to, well, we do have a good show for you guys today, though, because when we brought it out uh, for the first time, uh, the cab heat was working and something else went wrong. So the rest of this video is us working our way through that little crisis. And, uh, and then from there, we're moving on to different projects, different themes, We've got uh, spring just around the corner. We're going to be doing springtime things and then summer and summertime things. Yep. Uh, we've got all kinds of ongoing uh, building projects out here in the garage that we haven't showed you guys yet. So we're going to start showing you guys some of that stuff. And, and we're excited uh, about the future. Yep. And uh, so please enjoy today's show and we'll see you next time. Enjoy. Bye for now. At one point in this adventure, our diesel-fired uh, coolant heater quit working on us, but now that's working again. I think that was probably just a, a simple airlock in there, and it was it was overheating and tripping out. Anyhow, got it out, got it working, got it up to temperature, the same temperature the gauge has always read, incidentally, and uh, my shear pin for the snowblower rattled out, and it was a real close call because um, I was actually it stopped blowing snow i got out to see what was going on and this yoke was working its way off of this drive shaft so i just got in in time to to stop the engine and and then it fell off and that could have been that could have been like really bad i think so what i'm going to do is i'm going to make a i'm going to make a metal ring to go around this drive shaft so that even if it does shear uh the shear pin that can't be flopping around and killing all this other stuff up in here. So I'm doing that today. And also I'm going to take this nylock nut off here and I'm going to get the nylon out of it somehow. And I'm going to tack that nut to the bolt so that this guy can't just rattle out. Cause that's what happened to the old one. It, it just rattled out. It, nothing sheared. Uh, and that's, that's, that's a bad scene. So, uh, off camera a little earlier, I cut a piece of pipe off. And I got it in the lathe here, and I get, I want to get the I want to get this like, first of all I want to get the seam out of it, and I'm just about done doing that. Now I want to get the zinc out of it too because I don't want to be breathing that in when I weld it on. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to carry on 
uh, getting the zinc off of this because it's a galvanized pipe inside and out and then I'll be uh, welding it on. That's the inside done. Now I have to put my other jaws in so I can grab it from the inside and do the outside. Now I still want to space it out so that I can cut right to the back of it without running into my chuck jaws. So I'm using my little spacers again. This guy will just sit here for me. The other two are a little bit more of a challenge. There, now it'll run pretty true. So now I'm going to uh, remove the drive shaft so I can test fit the ring over it and take some measurements for some uh, mounting brackets that I'm going to make that I will then weld to this uh, piece of angle iron that you see right below the universal joint. For this lower bracket, a piece of two by quarter inch flat bar would be ideal. Now. I don't have any flat bar, but I've got some uh, angle iron lying around, little chunks left over. So I'm going to uh, uh, cut that up and make myself a little piece of two by quarter flat bar.
I'm just getting this plate clamped on, centered up and where I want it. Kind of by eye thing. Doesn't much matter exactly where it is. Yeah, that's where she's going to live, right there. All right. I'll hit it with a wire brush, but I mean, it's all welded up. Nice. What you measuring? For some like strut things. Doing another cooking video. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, those rods have been kicking around here for a couple years, so I'm just gonna cook some of the moisture out of them while I'm doing these other jobs. I should get better results when I go to tack that stainless nut onto the stainless bolt that I'm using for a shear pin. So it can't rattle out like the last one did. So I'm just gonna, I got a couple little struts cut here that I'm gonna weld from this ring out to the frame just to give it some additional support. And I'm just going to grind up some of the paint on the frame here um, so I'm not burning it, having to burn through it when I'm welding. See anywhere. Ugh. Airing the place out. Get a little uh, welding smoke out of here. Yeah. A little shot of fresh air before we carry on.
beautiful day out there today. Okay, so that's all welded up. I'm going to uh, put that bolt in that I'm using as a shear pin. It's a 3-8 stainless bolt and a nylock nut. I'm going to put the nylon nylock nut on upside down and then I'm going to weld the nut to the bolt so I can't have a rattle out incident like I did last time. Um, and then you're going to put grease in there. I'm going to put some grease in that gearbox, which is supposed to be full of oil, but uh, the, the seal leaks. It's, uh, I can't get the blower off the other end of the gearbox without destroying both the gearbox and the blower. Um, and so, although not everyone on the internet's happy about it, I'm going to go ahead and put some more grease in there. <laughs> uh, you know, and, and when it finally dies, I'm going to have to probably get like that blower that's on there, I'm going to have to like cut that out with a torch. So I'm going to get as many years out of this gearbox as I possibly can. And if it means feeding the grease to it, so be it. Works for now. And then I'm going to put a little hydraulic fluid in. It has a very slight hydraulic leak. Um, and then I'm going to get some Gorilla Tape. And I'm going to do a highly professional job of taping this wiring to the cab so that it doesn't get tore off by a tree. Then I'm gonna go finish plowing my driveway. All right. So I wanna weld that nut, that nut to that bolt so that I can't have a rattle out bolt incident like I had yesterday again. I don't have stainless wire for the MIG, but this machine does MIG, TIG, and stick, and I do have stainless sticks that are in the little toaster oven right now. So I'm gonna change everything over um, to set this up to run it with the stick. My threads aren't all buggered up now. Look at your big head. Are the threads buggered up now? Probably. I'm also... Yeah, they're buggered up now. If I can get this to start, though, it only has to go on the one time. Maybe I'll put it on the regular way and just burn that nylon out of there. Did I just hear you say, oh? Yeah, it was more of a ooh. Same idea, I suppose. See what he did. What'd you do? Just put too much weld on and a big gob of it dripped off. Not the prettiest thing. Hey. Well that's it for today's show, guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed. And if you did, please like, share, and subscribe. Have a good day. Bye for now. Your face is broken. <laughs> it's because I was smiling. <laughs> Metal. Work.